Hello again. Welcome to Southeastern 14. I'm Chris Lee, joined by Blake Lovell and Max Barr, where we preview SEC basketball. We've got five games to preview. We have already done Alabama, Kentucky, and Texas A&M, Tennessee in separate videos. Each video, a video for each of those games is a better way to put it. And now we're going to preview the remaining games. That is Missouri going to Arkansas, Vanderbilt traveling to Florida, South Carolina going to Ole Miss, Auburn visiting Georgia, and Mississippi State traveling to Baton Rouge to face the fighting LSU Tigers. And before we go there, we remind you, Online is your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up-to-the-minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs. With live in-game betting contests and all the best player props, experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or mobile devices. Head to Bet Online to become part of the team. Remember to use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online. The game starts here. We start an order of tip off noon Central. Missouri visits Arkansas. Missouri, the lone winless team in the Southeastern Conference. Arkansas showing a little like uh, uh, life of late, having upset Texas A and M. Arkansas now five. No, I'm sorry, four nine in the SEC. Uh, Missouri has got five more chances to win an SEC game. This one is on ESPN two. Probably represents one of Missouri's better chances to do that. Arkansas, according to Ken Palm, is a five point favorite. Max, what do you expect? What have you got on Bart Torvik? Yeah, Bart Torvik sees the same thing. Um, it's probably going to be about a two possession favorite for Arkansas. Um, but I'm I'm unusually excited for this one now that we have kind of a better idea of where the seeding lies right now with the SEC tournament. There's a lot riding on these lower seeded games. You want to get out of that you want to get out of that first uh that first game there. So there's a lot riding on this and we're gonna have a nice little maybe four, five point spread this one there's going to be a lot of intensity with this game these these teams are going to be playing uh with everything they got you want to get out of that first game there in the tournament let's talk about some things in, in the matchups briefly before we offer picks and we're going to give our man blake a little bit of a rest unless he wants to chime in until his pick he's he's free to but he's losing his voice and so we want to be protective of that um yeah, I'm just looking at this. This is a this is a red Ken Palm game. We got a lot of red across the charts of a lot of these teams. I'm I'm looking for things of interest. I mean, Arkansas blocks a lot of shots. Uh, you know, I don't know how relevant that is. Missouri doesn't shoot the ball extremely well anyway. What you don't want to do is put Missouri on the line. It shoots 78 percent from the the or from the free throw line. That's 15th in the country. Uh, Max, anything that really stands out to you here matchup-wise between these two teams? And also give us a health update because I think Trevon Brazil is, is probably still out. And, and Sean East, of course, most people know he's back. He's been a, bit, a big part of Missouri. Missouri's played a little better since he's come back healthy. Any notes in terms of the matchup or the health of guys here? Well, in, in terms of the matchup, Chris, there's one just just glaring, glaring – mismatch and you said the the Ken Palm it's a it's a red this is a this is a red velvet Ken Palm game here you're not there's not a lot of there's not there is not a lot of key line pie here when you look at it um but there is one and that's Arkansas's ability to get to the free throw line and that's Missouri's inability to defend without fouling that's the biggest mismatch I think of the entire matchup will be Arkansas getting to the free throw line getting Missouri into foul trouble uh, I mean, when you look at the point distribution, Chris, with how these teams uh, get their points, Arkansas gets a vast majority of their points from free throws. Uh, that's just it's how the offense has been putting up points with with how they don't really have consistent outside scoring threats. So, yeah, Arkansas is going to try to get to the line as much as they can. And with that being at home, you like to get that home friendly whistle. So that's, I think, the biggest area of this game a biggest advantage on either side would be Arkansas's free throws. Yeah, I'll go ahead and start off the picks. I don't know if we're buying into a little Arkansas improvement or not. 
Missouri with Sean East, as I mentioned, has been better. He and Tamar Bates are good enough to keep them in a game. I'm just gonna gonna ride with Arkansas at home for for lack of a better idea. I feel like Missouri needs to beat somebody before I can go there. So that's my pick. We'll take Arkansas. Blake, do you have any thoughts? Any anything you're seeing with the game? I'll make my pick after you do. You see what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to get out of it. Um, I, I think I think the voice is a cover. I think that's what it is. He doesn't want to tip his pick, and he wants yeah. to to set himself up to be the the guy at the end. Chris, how many times have we said there's levels to this game? I think we're mm-hmm. we're 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 starting to see that. Um, yep. You asked, are we buying into Arkansas playing a little bit better? I am, and, and maybe not, maybe not the X's and O's, but the toughness has definitely changed. We saw, we kind of saw. In the first half of the SEC play, Must wouldn't even know what to say after a game. He wouldn't even have words to the to answer a reporter's question. And now they're playing with toughness. Makai Mitchell's kind of got that, you know, cement strong point that has kind of anchored the front court. I kind of like the toughness they're playing with, but also Missouri's going to do everything they can to not go winless. So I'm gonna I'll go Arkansas at home here. But I think this is going to be one of the scrappiest, one of the more entertaining games of the slate, sneakily because it's low, low seated. But they're going to be they're going to be scrapping this game. It's going to be an intense game. Arkansas led by twenty three last time at Missouri. They went four of six from three. They need to replicate that performance here. Only take six threes, and you're going to be just fine if you're Arkansas. They turned Missouri over a lot. Um, Sean East did not have one of his better games last time in terms of scoring production. He only had 11 points. He was 2 of 8 from the floor. Or 3 of 8 from the floor, excuse me, but he had 6 turnovers. So did Bates. So, um, something else to quickly add, and be honest with you, this is the only reason I I, I decided to come on this video with you guys, was to give you this stat right here. (laughs) For all the Missouri people out there that are wanting my man Dennis fired and by the way I know I'm having some internet issues because why wouldn't I at this point with my internet provider if you watched last Saturday's uh, debacle <laughs> of a reaction stream uh, they've still not got it fixed but uh, anyways uh, that's my luck <laughs> but speaking of the luck <clears throat> do you want to know what Missouri is ranked in Ken Palm's luck rating this year does anyone know what it is probably not good 361 out of 362 oh. teams. Wow. Only Murray State has been unluckier. And here's the interesting thing. The second unluckiest team in the SEC, Auburn. Um, yeah, hmm. I can see that. You know what Missouri ranked in Ken Palm's luck rating last year? High. It was really good. I think it was ninth or 10th. Yeah. So, tail of two seasons for the Tigers – Give me the Razorbacks, hmm. the Hogs, the Muspus back on track, and maybe, just maybe, Missouri fans, this pick has given you exactly what you need to get off of the zero offer in the SEC. We'll see. Did you see what he did there? That was that was. He, good. he came in with about two, three minutes of just gloom and doom, and I thought that's what we're getting today. And at the end, he just came out with it. It's the southeastern fourteen kiss of death. This man has given his client Dennis Gates a victory. That is what has happened here. He's doing everything he can. He I mean, wouldn't it be the most Arkansas thing this year to lose? Yes, to yes, it would. It would. So I don't think it's it that would. out of the realm of possibility. But I. It would come full circle. Probably. With our it with would. our opening our opening day it pick would. of everyone picking Arkansas over Auburn, it would it would come full well, circle. Well, somehow we are are nine minutes and fifteen seconds into this, and, and we have not left Arkansas, Missouri. All right, we and, and maybe it's just because we're trying to avoid what comes next, and that's Vanderbilt, Florida. Florida, um, Florida. <laughs> I <I'll> go first. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> N- nothing else, just Florida. I think it's so. jump. Chris, do you oh. got anything to add on this one? <laughs> Florida. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ken Palm's gonna have Ken Palm's got this as an 18 point win for Florida. Spreads probably might be even at 20. 
Um, I'm not going to try to dive too deep into it, but Florida's off a bounce back, coming off of a tough loss where they should have beat, not should have beat, but led Alabama for a lot of the game. I just, I think Vanderbilt doesn't have the big guys to, this isn't the type of game that they like. They they don't have the men uh, in the front court to handle Florida. So I'll go Florida, <laughs> what should probably be a spread close to 20. Yeah, All that's, right, that's, that's one, talk Eastern, about this. one Eastern SEC network. We got to talk about it for at least a minute. So, um, let's see. Gainesville, great place. A lot of sunshine. A lot of um, gators. Actually, gators yeah, don't really lot, make it that far inland. Gators, think, unless yeah. you got a problem. Look, Max and I tried to give Vanderbilt the benefit of the doubt in the game against Georgia. We said, "All right, another home game. Here's a chance against a team that's on a six-game losing streak." And they came out and just did not play well. And obviously, we've talked about you know, what came after and, and all that. But, I mean, Florida's coming off of a pretty disappointing loss at Alabama, not because of the opponent, because they felt like they had the game to win. It was there for the taking, and they just couldn't find a way to close it. Um, and so I think they come out, yeah, on a mission here. And, I, I mean, just you just don't know what you're, you're getting with Vanderbilt, like we said. I mean, you get the team that showed up against Texas A&M, beat them. Um or do you get the team that went to Tennessee and was down, what, 40 at one point? So it's just – it's hard to know. But, I mean, that's why, you know, this team is 2-11 and 11 in the SEC. You just really don't know where you're getting on a night-in-night-out basis. And this just seems like a brutal matchup given the the spot for the Gators. Yeah, I mean, and also Vanderbilt's strength is its guards in Lawrence and, and Manion. Florida's are better. The inside is really no contest. No, I haven't said that – you know, it looked like a physical mismatch, and they beat A and M too. But yeah, but Florida's uh, yeah, got I, four guards. Vanderbilt's got two to that level, I think, and Florida's got four well. Of them. Look, but, I'm I'm trying to make some. You you said we need to at least go a minute on this game. You're so picking I'm trying Vanderbilt. To, I'm trying what to you're bow to your wish. No, that's that's what what not saying. what I'm saying. Oh, okay, all right. But my best part of this first two picks is Max usually does this thing about how he's sweating in advance and can't wait and going to be exhausted, and even he's like. Mailed it in on these no. two picks, I think. So, yeah, Max's um, shirt is still clean at this point. Yeah, which is yeah. which is not good. Now this next one, look. This out. next one, yeah, South Carolina Ole Miss. This is um, this is interesting because South Carolina needs to win somewhere, sometime. He's still, I think, easily in the NCAA tournament, but you don't want couple of losses to turn into more. Now here's the problem. Ole Miss is a team with its back against the wall. Firmly on the bubble, the computer metrics all over the place, and and Max is a resident Ole Miss guy here. What do the Rebels do? There's a couple things they do, but I'm going I'm to see where you go with this. Man, th- this is probably my, besides the, out of this video that we're doing, this is probably the game I'm looking forward to the most. Um, spread is, I don't even know if we're going to get a spread might just come out dead even. Um, but when you're looking at spots, both teams coming off of losses. So both teams needing a win. There's no motivational edge anywhere. Ole Miss has played very well at home. That that's probably been the, the biggest strength that they've had during SEC play. But when you're looking at the matchup, the things that I am seeing the most is there, there's advantages on both sides that I see. But the main thing with the South Carolina defense, that's what we've been loving this defense. They keep everything in front. They do not allow a lot of three-point attempts, and they do not allow a lot of free throw attempts. And so that, you know, that's going to force Ole Miss into a very small margin of error for offense. It's going to be a lot of Brakefield and Flanagan's mid-range jumpers and kind of that maybe a little Juju Murray floaters here and there. But it's going to be a, a very one-dimensional Ole Miss offense thanks to what the South Carolina defense does. But on the flip side, the Ole Miss defense forces turnovers at a top three rate in the SEC. And this is a South Carolina offense has really struggled with taking care of the ball. So I think both defenses kind of match up well against the opposing offenses. And I can't really see any team separating here. What about you guys? Anything? Well, keep in mind, South Carolina was up 17 the last time around. Yeah. And why did Ole Miss make their run? Well, 
South Carolina, I think, went a little bit cold. They were 9-27 and from three. But keep in mind, too, nine of these things got the free throw line. Lowest free throw yep. shooting output of any SEC game this season. Ole Miss went 5-7. of seven. South Carolina went 3-7. of seven. That's an unofficial stat, by the way. I don't. I'm assuming that's the lowest free throw output of the the year. I can't imagine there's another game that only had 14 free throws total. So, you know, so both of these teams, I think, and at least I think we said at the time we were like Ole Miss was right there with a chance to win, and they only took 10 threes, they only hit four. And remember, this is a team that's you know top 15 nationally in three point percentage, and that's kind of been the theme of the offense at times. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I can't see this being a game where. Either team is going to separate for the full 40 minutes. We did see South Carolina separate last time just a little bit, but then Ole Miss made the run. Uh, it all kind of evened out. So, yeah, this should be a this should be a great game. I, I mean, it may not be the highest scoring game, but I think it should be a great game just from the standpoint of again, I don't I don't see any blowout potential here on either side. Yeah, I'll give you something that stands out. I think you guys may have touched on this a little bit earlier. The, the initial matchup. We talked about Ole Miss shoots a high percentage of threes. It's not a high volume three point shooting team. Well, because right. of the way the Carolina defends and really gets after you, Ole Miss was forty percent from three. He took ten three pointers. Uh, Ole Miss also was five to seven at the foul line. In spite of that, Ole Miss lost the game by three points at a time when Carolina was playing better and he was playing at home. Now, look, Carolina was playing well everywhere and anywhere at that point in time. But uh, just I'll just go ahead and get us started on the picks. This is one of these that I just look at and say, okay, I could, I could argue for either team. I'm going with a home team, so I'll take Ole Miss. Another thing, another angle that we have here that we didn't we haven't mentioned yet is the week off system kind of thing that we've got going the south oh, carolina yeah. south carolina had the midweek off um and so that and that's a week off after losing two straight so that that is not a fun week off that is a very we we need to get back out there and get back in the winning column type of week off so you've got that angle going for south carolina too um but i can't choose against my rebels i can't i can't do it i can't do it they need a win at home desperately slipping out of the NCAA tournament. They know. They know what their status is. Um, and I, I think so the the overall season motivation gonna give the edge to Ole Miss because it's it's getting close to do or die t- you know time here for Ole Miss. So give me Chris Beard at home, but I really do I'm I'm saying this confidently. I think this is going to be a razor close game. I can't really see either team pulling away. Ole Miss needs this more than South Carolina needs it. Um, I just, I mean, Ole Miss has reached a point where it is kind of, they've got two big opportunities coming up here, and that's about it. That's, that's all it. they've got left is yep. South Carolina at home, Alabama at home. So they've got to be able to get one of these. Um, they got it. If you get both, you're feeling really good about yourself probably. You're not a lot, but you're feeling much better. If you're able to get both, Um, yeah, and so – I just think this is one where, again, it's, you know, a matter of, of motivation and, you know, which team is really hitting shots because sometimes we've just seen these teams can go a little bit cold at times. Um, and, I mean, again, that the last game kind of played out exactly as you would have expected. It just would have thought that even when South Carolina was up big, you're thinking, oh, boy, this is just kind of tricky if Ole Miss starts hitting a couple shots and that's when we've seen the guards kind of go crazy in that game for, for Ole Miss. Um, and so – yeah, great game uh, at the Pavilion, and for some reason, you guys, the team takes the midweek off, and you just seem to forget who your father is, and you know it's just I'm not surprised by this at all. I mean, I I can't they can't say it's a surprise, but I am going to bank on Lamont Paris getting his guys back up after a really rough week. Because the numbers tell us that they've done a pretty good job of rebounding this season in terms of um, figuring it out. You know, I know the LSU game was like, well, they come off a 40 point win. What happened there? I think that's a lot about LSU. And we've talked about LSU, and we'll get to them in a second. But I'm going to take, take a chance on the Gamecocks here on the road. Because the fact is, I think it's going to be close. And it's basically a toss up to me. I, I don't, yeah. I can't imagine either team being favored by more than two points in a game like this so because of that 
I'm going to say the Gamecocks get back to their ways and bounce back with a very, very close victory at the Pavilion. And also didn't want to put the – we also couldn't all just go against South Carolina because la- when we've done that this season, let's call it what it is, yeah, we've gotten roasted. Disaster. We've gotten roasted every single time we've all went against South Carolina. So give me the Gamecocks in a close game. All right. This one, Auburn – Travels to Georgia in the first of two matchups for these teams. Six Eastern SEC Network. Auburn is probably going to be what about a seven or eight point favorite, Max? Yep. Yep. Right yep. on. I'm going to start here again. We we look for the Auburn would be the clear favorite, so we look for angles, and I'm, I'm going to give you two. One, Auburn puts teams on the free throw line a lot and, and I, I don't have the stats in front of me I'm going to guess it happens more on the road than it does at home Georgia gets to the foul line a lot 28th in the country Auburn 304th in terms of rate at which it sends teams to the foul line and, and measured through free throw to field goal attempts so that's number one now th- there is a little problem here Auburn blocks a lot of shots and Georgia gets a lot of shots blocked. So that's that's a place where it tilts heavily in Auburn's favor. But we have the, the Jalen Williams situation. We have the fact that Auburn has just been all over the place lately. Uh, Max, give us a health update and, and anything that you see in the matchup here of interest. Oh, Williams not playing. He's not. Okay, he's that's not what I the, thought. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he won't be playing. Um, you'll see a lot more. Cheney Johnson um, in that in that four role, and you, you you might even see maybe uh, go small to match to match Georgia's small ball lineup. Um, probably more Chad Baker Mazzara as well. Um, but what I'm seeing in this one, it, real interesting because it's probably going to be a spread about seven and a half, eight. You probably nailed it, give or take a basket there. Um, but Georgia at home, just listen to these leads that they've held at home. Their last home game against Florida, they were up by 11. There's the one before that against South Carolina, they're up by 10. The home game before that against Alabama, they're up by 16. I mean, their past three home games have been three losses, and all three of them they held double digit leads in. And it's not even against, it's not like it's against Vandy, Mizzou, and some other team that's in the bottom half. This is Florida, South Carolina, Alabama. They just can't close games, but they've gotten out to double-digit leads in every one of them. Um, and with only three home games left, this is the biggest one. Man, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of stuff I like with Georgia here. Um, but there are obviously, if you look at the numbers, there's gonna, Al, or Auburn's gonna be favored in almost every category. But with the way that Georgia's played at home, and they just haven't been able to close one out, but. Man, I mean, three straight games, double-digit leads. You got to think there's something to that. Let's get to the picks. All right, I'll start. This has been a crazy year in SEC basketball. This has been a crazy year in NCAA basketball, maybe even more than the SEC. And there, there are things all over this sheet that suggest – Auburn should win this game easily, especially when you look at Auburn's offense versus Georgia's defense. This this smells of a an Auburn blowout through the recipe inside of of Cardwell and Janai Broom. Except they're on the road. (laughs) And crazy stuff happens on the road. And every now and then you just need to to go with your gut and pick something that doesn't intuitively always make sense. <clears throat> I, I I feel like Georgia has been ready to break through a little bit. I feel like Auburn, I don't know what I'm getting from one night to the next. I feel like Auburn's coming off a tough spot. I'm going to be the guy to pick the upset. Give me Georgia. Wow. Wow. I love that pick, and I'm going to do it also. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Bulldogs. I love Give it. me the Bulldogs. For a loop. No Jalen Williams. Georgia's got to win one of these, right? They got to yes, break through one thought. of them. They got to get one of them. Auburn may 
come in here and do their thing. If that happens, so be it. I lost this one. But I'm taking a chance on Georgia here. Wow. Wow. We appreciate all you guys watching Southeastern 14 presented by Overreaction. <laughs> Anytime anyone beats Vanderbilt, these two over here just all of a sudden crown them as the, the next national champions. Georgia beats Vanderbilt on the road. It's time to crown the Bulldogs. The Kirby Smart era has begun in basketball. Eight Pete, here it comes. Meanwhile... We've talked about the strength of this Auburn team all season. It is their depth. They have a lot of options to work with. Jalen Williams, their second best player, will not be active in this game. He will be sidelined in this particular college basketball game. But they've got a lot of depth to work with. The Tigers are angry. They are on the prowl. And they're going to come out and... Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? Are you going to do it? <laughs> I'm going to go Auburn here. Because <gasps> I entered this video really thinking about picking Georgia. But whenever you two went that direction, I had no choice. I Look, I thought when you guys said eight points, is that what we're thinking on the line? Seven That's and what Ken has it. Yeah. That's a lot of points. I would I'd stay far away from that, and I would want no part of it. Um, because I do think there is that potential. Because Max brought up something. Georgia's got, I mean, they've been so close so many times. But that's kind of been my knock on them, is that they have been so close so many times and they just can't find ways to finish games. And so, mm, this is a sneaky one. So this is the bad spot game, right? I always talk about the bad spot. I can see why you two pick Georgia. I'm picking Auburn. I like the way you set that up. Hmm. You gave us the look of, these two guys are complete idiots, and I'm embarrassed to be on screen with them. And then, then you validated what we were thinking of doing. Yeah. I hate it when that happens. I know you do. That's the best part of this. Uh, Mississippi State visits LSU, 830 Eastern, SEC Network. Both teams coming off big wins. Uh, this this one ought to be fun. The state's not been very good on the road. LSU's got a a very slim path to the NCAA tournament. Uh, it, it's slim enough. I don't know that it can get there, but that's why we play the games. Max, I'll let, you, I'll let you lead this one off on what you've got here. Man, what – I mean, geez, this is a tough – this is a tough Saturday with a lot of close spreads here. And that we haven't had – we haven't had many blowouts. But uh, this one, I think it's – I'm just going to keep it real simple. Yeah, I could, I could dive down and kind of – talk about the Mississippi State perimeter defense or their inability to shoot. There's you, different ways you could look at. Both teams have angles here. I'm just keeping it as simple as Mississippi State really, really, really struggles on the road. Um, only road win in SEC play is against the only team that hasn't won a game yet. So you've got that going against probably what I would say, other than maybe Florida, the hottest one of the hottest teams uh, in the SEC with how they've been playing lately. Um, so I'm just keeping it. I'm probably going to keep it as simple as that. But if one of you guys influences me another way, I'm open to that too. Well, I would never do that. Um, <laughs> I mean, Mississippi State, as you said, is just not a good road team. And – I would worry me a bit for, for State here. And we said LSU coming off a of, – LSU's on a roll here. I mean, I know Mississippi State's won four in a row, but LSU's kind of – I don't know. Would you they've say been playing they've done well. It a little, done in a little more impressive fashion because they played two tougher opponents, I think, than the four that Mississippi State has played. And so, yeah, interesting setup. We'll get to the picks here shortly. I, I think the home road thing is interesting here. We've talked about Mississippi State's – troubles there and i'm looking at lsu lsu has lost three games at home and, and i don't really see a pattern because alabama was one of the losses alabama we just we know what alabama does it just scores a ton of points on you and, and that night it put up 102 the other two losses were to a&m back in the time where a&m was dreadful offensively and put up 73 points and then the other one was kansas state back in december i don't know if that's 
how much relevance that has now because it's been almost two and a half months removed. But the, the, the point is, if you're looking for an easy answer on LSU's and I can't find it, I, I will go with what I see in front of me. That I, I think that Jordan Wright and Will Baker right now at home are good enough to carry this team against a team that struggles on the road. I don't even know about Cook. What What's his status for this one? He's I mean, been, they've been playing without him and winning without him. So he's nursing a hamstring. Oh, so it, it, you know how those, you know how hamstrings can get. I mean, you can be doing good for a week and then just tweak it. So I, I'm not expecting much from him because hamstrings can get a little bit messy. Yeah, I'll I'll take LSU at home anyway. Yeah, the the one thing, the one area that I'm really liking is, so we just saw with Mississippi State how that front court depth has now kind of changed with Kashawn Murphy coming back and being healthy, and he kind of provides where, where Jimmy Bell and Tolu are kind of the bruisers, you know, just sort of a bully ball attitude. Murphy's a little bit more of a stretch guy. It has a little bit more of a jump shot, brings a little bit of a different angle, but he's still 6'10", 6'11". It, well, this LSU team's one of the rare teams that has depth to match that with 6'10", Derek Fallon, 6'10", Jalen Reed, 7'0", Will Baker, 6'10", Hunter Dean. They have bodies to match up with Mississippi State's front court, and I, I like that. Uh, and I'll give the shooting edge to LSU with how – Tyrell Ward, Jordan Wright, and all them can shoot the ball. I'll go LSU at home here pretty confidently. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, I'm surprised no one brought up the hangover effect because we talk about it all the time. With a team that comes off a huge emotional win, they stormed the court, they got fined by the SEC. The SEC's taking their money in Baton Rouge. And you just wonder – this is a Mississippi State team that plays a different way than Kentucky. Um, they're going to come in. It's going to be a bruiser-type game, very physical. Um, and, again, this is a team that's riding a very hot wave here. I mean, they've played really well over the past couple weeks. The schedule lightened up a little bit. And Mississippi State still needs some wins to, to feel pretty good about its NCAA tournament chances. They can't just start you know, backpedaling here and still think they're safe. So that that makes this an interesting game. Um, I, I just I wonder about LSU coming out, maybe struggling a little bit early, coming off the, the hangover of the Kentucky game. However, here's the difference. If this game was like an 11 a.m. game, I'd be really worried for LSU. Mm. But luckily, it's the last game of the evening. It's the late night game. And I think that could make a difference. And you just cannot – I mean, we have to go what we've seen with Mississippi State on the road. And it's not been pretty. And so LSU's been good at home. Give me the Bayou Bengals. LSU at the PMAC. Here's one more thing, Blake. And the reason, because I saw the same thing that I saw, because I'm always looking at those spots with the, the letdown spot for LSU. The reason I didn't bring it up is because I think the same thing applies for Mississippi State. You're coming off of the rivalry rematch of the Ole Miss rivalry that's just been renewed this year double digit win at home places going nuts sold out crowd so now you have to go on the road so i think i think it applies to both teams that's why i didn't mention it as like a big angle for either side that's fair gentlemen do, do you see what we've done here what have we done uh, I believe, uh, if I've gotten the math correct, we have we have gone home team in all five games. On the aggregate, not all of us. Not oh, all. Well, of I, mean, us. I, I did. I said on the whole, like on that, like the majority, we oh, went okay. the home team on all of them, right? Yeah. And we gave the kiss of death to Arkansas and Florida, right? And, and, LSU. and LSU. Okay, so we've got we've got three southeastern fourteen kiss of death. Situations. One of those teams is losing. One of them's going down. <laughs> who's going? Who's going down? Um, hmm. Is Missouri going to go into Arkansas and win? Man, I don't know. See, I I could either pick that one or it's I LSU. could pick LSU sorry, in, in LSU. the spot. We apologize. I hope it's, it's not be LSU. LSU. I'm sorry. LSU makes the most sense because I think if you if you put the teams on a neutral floor. 
of those three spots, that's the team that would be favored to win. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, so. Home teams have won 63% of the game so far in SEC play. So some of us should be applauded for our our ability to take a risk here and go with some road teams, okay? And not just be homers, pun intended. All right? Sometimes you got to just take a risk and pick a couple teams on the road. So give me the two ranked teams on the road this weekend. <laughs> He's acting like he All picked right. Missouri. See what I did there? Yeah, I, I there. see what he did there. <clears throat> Such a risk taker, this man. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're done with picks. Again, we've got Alabama, Kentucky, and A&M, Tennessee on other videos. We will be recapping these probably Saturday night, I'm going to guess. Maybe oh, Sunday yeah. morning. Depends, depends on my internet provider. Right. <laughs> Is your internet you provider You may see two faces, too? and you may see uh, – little egg otherwise so <laughs> an egg whatever was on the screen last time i don't know what is I think it what is the actually, status of your internet it's yeah people are watching this video they, they see what the status is because i can already tell you it's cut out a couple times um but i think i didn't realize this you can actually change the picture that's on the screen so oh if if, if my internet's not working saturday i've got a great picture that i'm gonna <laughs> put on the screen in place of me. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. I kind of hope my internet's not working, to be honest with you. I'm going to say so, a prayer that your internet doesn't work on Saturday. I hope it's not working. Go so sabotage it, Chris. It's going to be great. Are you still getting the finger from your service provider, or, or they at least agreed to come out and address Oh, there's, no, there's been no movement. There's been no forward movement on anything. So, yeah. Do they All know right. what we're doing here? Do they know I don't think what they they're do. putting in jeopardy? The Southeastern 14 predictions videos. Surely uh, not. Apparently not. The phenomenon known as the Southeastern 14 kiss of death. So the best part of this is you made fun of me for my internet at working for how, and then one day it just is worked with perfection. Well, without a let's, glitch. let's be careful here. Um, your yes. internet issues lasted a couple of years. Mine has lasted about a week. So there's a big difference in the time range there. So let's just, let's, let's, let's calm down a little bit. Calm down just a tad. And Max is not blurry today. Shocker. Shocker. By the way, picks, All remember, right. Kentucky, Alabama, separate video. Tennessee, Texas A&M, separate video. It'll Check be linked out. down below. It'll be linked in the description. We will be back to bring you clarity on whatever happens. Blake or Invisible Blake, blurry Max or clear Max, and, and me, whatever that looks like. Best way to get it, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Have a great weekend. We are Southeastern 14 presented by Bet Online.